Now, I want to say uh, before I get to the actual nuts and bolts of what that next evolutionary chapter would look like in my view, and again, it's subject to what you think about it and something may evolve that, that looks a little different. Uh, I want to talk about what to me is the whole spiritual foundation of the way I approach the NYRP. I want to read to you um, a somewhat substantial excerpt from uh, Lecture 20, God the Creation, because this is one of the two places in the lectures where the guy actually talks about the community. Um, the other place being one of the supplementary uh, materials. Uh, talks about the community at length and um, this is just really foundational to me and the way I relate to it and I don't know how familiar how many people out there are with this. Um, and so I want to read it and you know if it's old hat to you then I'm just going to ask you to bear with me or maybe you can fast forward a little bit or whatever. But I, I really think it's important. So this is from Lecture 20, God the Creation. In the first place, understand that as a counterpart for your community on Earth, which is gradually growing larger, this was, I don't know the exact year, but it had to be around 1960, there exists a considerably greater community in the spirit world which governs everything pertaining to your community, your community being the NYRP, what, what became the NYRP. This organization in the spirit world is helping and guiding you, deciding many factors in connection with all of you, but on a much broader scale than any of you can realize. I want to stress that there is no coincidence here. None of you have been drawn to this community by chance, not even those who come here once and do not stay because they lack either the spiritual maturity to understand what is going on, or because they do not want to develop spiritually and walk this path of perfection for which a continuous supply of spiritual food is necessary. Okay, so then there's a discussion about people who come and listen to the guy and why they might be guided to the community at a particular time. And the guide concludes that discussion by saying this. Some of you who think you come here by chance just for the experience or even out of curiosity need to know there's a great deal more to it than that. There is an organization in the spirit world that governs you and decides who should be chosen and who should be bypassed at least this time. Particular spirits who have this task and are trained for this work are being sent as scouts to consider all the relevant circumstances pertaining to the individuals in question. If it seems that a person should join you or at least should be given the chance to, then these spirit scouts get in touch with that person's guardian spirits, the latter guide their protégés to someone in your circle and perhaps inspire that person to propose the idea of joining your group. This will give you some idea of how much work and care is involved concerning even the smallest detail. The choice of lecture subjects also necessitates a considerable amount of work in the spirit world, for the appropriate subject at the appropriate time is not always easy to determine, and I personally could not possibly do this alone. Okay, so then the guide goes on to describe this vastly complex process of cooperation among this entire team of which the guide is only one member to figure out what should be communicated to the group. And the guide describes how lecture subjects have to be tailored in such a way as to give some members of the group what they need while not obstructing the growth of others by telling them things before they're ready to understand them correctly. After which, the guide says, This may give you an idea of the organization in the spirit world that is the counterpart of your group. This organization is deeply involved with many details you completely ignore. It is working with love, care, and wisdom to guide everything to the best advantage of all concerned including those whom you do not know as yet, but who will join you in the future. To compute all these data demands, trained experts working with unceasing effort, foresight, and thorough knowledge of, the div of divine law, as well as with great devotion to God and his great plan of salvation, the proper growth of your community is of imperative importance in the plan of salvation and of deeper significance than most of you sense. Now, when I read that, every time I read that, I'm just filled with uh, a sense of, of awe and of purpose and of connection. Um, and yet, at the same time, based on some conversations I've had in the past and, and so on, I'm not sure that 
everyone feels that way. I'm not sure that everyone in leadership feels that way. I'm not sure that everyone in membership feels that way. I, I'm not sure that everyone in membership even knows that this is part of the foundation uh, of that the NYRP stands on, um, assuming that that we're meant to take this seriously, which which I do, um, and that's kind of what I want to say at this point is that I really do personally take this seriously and my sense is that the only way we're going to really uh, get anywhere in this community is to have, excuse my cat, um, she had an operation and I can't let her out. Um, we're not going to get anywhere until um, there's some kind of core of people uh, who are involved in in having the community work and grow, who are animated by by some sense of, of real connection to this spiritual significance of what we're doing. And you may not agree with that. Um, and if you don't, that's fine. But that's where I'm coming from. Um, and I just want to say quickly, too, there may be some people there thinking, well, you know, he takes that seriously, but he doesn't realize these other flaws in the lectures and so forth. So I want to kind of head that off. Uh, I know that there are people who have a lot of difficulty with what the lectures have to say about Jesus Christ. I was born an atheist. I never took Jesus Christ seriously. Uh, at the same time, when I read what the lectures do say about Christ, I just don't see any logical reason to um, assume that any of it's not true. It's contrary to what I was uh, brought up to believe. But it doesn't seem illogical, it doesn't seem false, it doesn't seem problematic to me. Um, the other thing that I know people have a problem with is what the guide has to say in Lecture 53, Self-Love and the Questions and Answers about Homosexuality. And I totally get why that's a problem for people. I think that the tone of that sounds really off, sounds really wrong to me. My interpretation of why is that I think Ava, in translating the guide's picture language into words, uh, injected a lot of her attitudes in that. If I kind of extrapolate back and kind of try to sift out that kind of judgmental attitude and get back to the core message that the guy might be, might have been trying to give there, um, I can still see where it might be a problem for some people, but I'm sort of the same place I was with, with Christ, that, that I am with Christ about that. I don't have a need to reject that as being untrue. So uh, I'm going to kind of just say I, I know why people have issues with the material. I don't. Um, I, and one other thing too is I know that there are people who are just disappointed who feel like this material has not delivered from them, which is something I'm going to really try to look at in more detail later on, and maybe more in part two. Um, but uh, I don't feel that way either. I, I, I feel like it's the material has lived up uh, to its promise for me. Uh, not that I'm done, you know, but if I project the a continuation of my growth into the future, I, I don't see any reason to be unhappy or dissatisfied. So that's just me. Uh, you know, if you feel differently, fine, but I, I kind of have a need to put that out there because it, it colors and it informs and it animates everything that I do, that I take this seriously. So also, uh, well, where that leads to then is that if I take seriously that the proper growth of the NYRP is of uh, imperative importance in the plan of salvation and of deep significance, then as someone who has left and who is watching it kind of flounder, um, I can't just walk away with what it has done for me in my own life and say, okay, well, I'm good, and uh, leave it at that. I have a, a, a felt obligation to try to do something to help revive the NYRP uh, for the sake of myself, everybody who has ever had a connection to the NYRP, and uh, eventually, you know, for the world as a whole. So that's what I'm trying to do here. And, and, and therefore, it really focuses the question on what does proper growth of the community look like and how do we achieve proper growth?